Hi, I'm JR, and this is my wife and my 2005 Odyssey 525 CE Tritune, and she's a project. This is a 2005 Johnson 150. The model is PLSOE. This is her with the hood off. I've already done a couple of the carburetors. This one, and this one, and actually one more on the other side. And the problem with these carburetors is they're a plastic fuel bowl and carburetor body. And they end up warping and the seals in here will leak fuel. So I don't know if you can see, but fuel and oil mix has leaked all down there. It's just filthy. So I've already done this one here. Go ahead and get this one off. I'll show you how I rebuild that. Just for reference, these carburetors have four bolts and one security screw. One bolt is here. The other bolt is here. There's a security screw right there. Another bolt here. Another bolt there. All 10 millimeter. The security screw is a TS20. So it's a Torx security, meaning it has a little dimple inside of it to accommodate a little pin. It's also five pointed instead of six. So it's kind of, I don't know if you can see that or not. I have no idea what the camera is focused on. But it's got five points instead of the normal six with the Torx. So So I mentioned the big issue with these carburetors being plastic is that the fuel bowls will warp and where they connect to the body of the carburetor will leak fuel um, and so thus the ones that I've pulled out I can't really hear but there's no fuel left in them whatsoever and I think that's because when I tilted the motor up all the fuel just ran out um, see if I can give you a good angle on this is an old one that I've already done and you can see how much bow is in the surface of that bowl okay so versus this is a brand new one that I've ordered it's an OEM part and if anything it'd be almost bowed the opposite direction so that when the corners are screwed in they pull tight so you can see a pretty big difference an old one versus the new one they also have these little little uh, like a BB inserted right in here and those I've been told also leak over time so it's best to put some epoxy filler which I've done uh, a while back to fill that okay. okay first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill my bowl over here I'm going to be using it to clean out the parts with rubbing alcohol. I'm going to have a little syringe on hand to clean out the orifices. Okay, I'm going to set that aside for now. Look how dry that is. hasn't had fuel in it in a while. So I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to work on the main body of the carburetor first. So every, I don't know, you can see that very well. Every one that I've taken apart so far, the float has been really high, like that. This one's actually, looks like it's fairly well adjusted. It's supposed to be parallel with the surface here. Well, it's a little easier to take off the gasket and you can see. So, it should be parallel with the surface. And this one's a lot better than the other ones. Uh, the other three I've done have been sitting very proud. Okay. We'll take off our float. Just has one screw holding that in. It's also, I have the manual. This is the second one I've taken apart that's had the float pin attached to the side of the float 
instead of uh, in the manual, it shows it connected here instead. This is coming in from this direction. I don't know if this is just another way of doing it, that's fine, but I'm going to put it back how the manual shows it this direction. So the new kit that I have doesn't come with a new pin, but it comes with a new float. So I'm going to discard that. I'm going to inspect the pin. up and the tip looks good okay take off this little gasket here it come the new kit comes with a new gasket uh, this little gasket I'm not sure what it's called sorry uh, the new float the new little hinge pin here that it comes with as well okay a larger screwdriver and get this and this uh, nothing's been clogged we can oops so we can see that there you should be able to see a hole and you can So there's a little maze in here, and it uh, so this gasket also comes with the kit. This plate you retain, this orifice you retain. This air orifice needs to come off as well and be cleaned out. Ooh. This one <clears throat> can also possibly see light through there. So, I'm going to take and just clean all of this stuff. I'm going to use my alcohol, suck it up in the syringe, put it through this air orifice. I'm also going to use an air compressor, just blow those wide open. Manual says don't set your air compressor any higher than 25 PSI. So that's what I have mine set on. Okay. So I'm going to go and just clean this whole situation here. fuel goes I believe up through the through there so there must be some garbage that's all from the inside of this carburetor somewhere because that was not in there before so it's definitely getting something out there now I'm getting actual uh, alcohol through that tube it was blocked up just a second ago so that makes me happy I might make a second video after I get this all back together and uh, adjusting the needle valves which are on the manifold still on the motor 
so the, uh, the needle valves, I guess, meter the amount of fuel that goes through. And the spec on this motor is five and three quarters turns out from seated. And I went ahead and turned one of mine in, and it was sitting all the way at nine turns out, nine and a quarter actually. So either someone adjusted it indirectly or someone adjusted it for a dirty carburetor situation. I'm not exactly sure. So uh, hopefully once I get these all back together, uh, I won't have it so out of spec. Just running alcohol through every orifice I can. Okay. It's pretty good. <clears throat> the other thing someone did the last time these were cleaned out, they put some sort of adhesive on the little gasket back here. And there's a new gasket here too. You can see there's old adhesive on this. And it shouldn't have adhesive on it. This should just be held in by a little bit of uh, grease or something in order to put that in there and then put it right back on the manifold. Uh, someone used adhesive. So now I've got to go through what this is a uh, O-ring puller, I believe. And I've been having to, on each one, go through and scrape out lightly all this adhesive because I know this will get stuck in the jets. So I'll set that aside now, but I'll do that before everything goes back together. Okay. New kit also comes with a new O-ring for this. Which is a good thing. This doesn't look like it's in great shape, to be honest. Maybe a little better than I thought, but... All right, and there's actually a uh, a jet inside of here as well, all the way down there. You can see as I'm turning it out, come through. Has a nice big open port, but I'm going to go ahead and clean this with some alcohol, anyways. Okay, off camera, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to blow everything out with my air gun 25 psi. And uh, then I'll come back and maybe clean this up a little bit with this uh, with this pick and put everything back together. So I'll be back. So what I'm doing is just trying to get all of this adhesive that the previous person put on the gasket out of this channel and make sure it's not in any of the little orifices on this carb just going around in each little area very lightly I'm not scratching the plastic or anything with this just just enough where I can feel that there's some of that adhesive and it's trying to scrape it out of there right? and then try to pick it out my fingers I could just imagine this stuff going through the jets and getting trapped in the air. You can see how much I've pulled out of here already. So, I don't know. I don't know why they did this. Uh, it doesn't call for it in the manual. As far as I know, uh, there wouldn't be any reason, you know, if you were using the grease to hold it in like I've done with the other carburetors and like it suggests in the manual to do. I don't know. Just making 
rebuilding these about three times as long as it should be. Okay, so I got that all out of there. I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, I could spend all day probably getting every little minuscule bit, but that is uh, pretty clean. So first thing we want to do is uh, mess with the flow, uh, the, the fuel bowl because that's probably the easiest to just throw back together. But one thing I want to do before I lose it is put this air screw back in the front of the carburetor. It just seems really easy to lose, so I'm going to go ahead and put that back in first. Okay, so that's back in, and now I'm going to set that aside and go ahead and reassemble the bowl. Okay. So the uh, jet goes back in. Turn real gentle on this. These are plastic parts, so you have to back it out first make sure it clicks into the threads and then go back in just so snug uh, then this part here picked up the wrong guy <clears throat> has a little o-ring He's done, so I'm going to go ahead and set him off the side. Alright, uh, then we're going to go ahead and blow all these out. Put this jet back in. Okay, then we're going to go with the float, that's the new one, and the tin, well just the, uh, what you call it, hinge, hinge pin, a little tab here, faces down, actually what I'm going to do first, so I get this set, and properly to height, and then I'm messing with this side. There's a chance I could grab that, bend it out of position. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to get this, this side on first. <clears throat> there should be only one way this bad boy goes on. Boop. Like that. Fuel needle there. It's going to go into this there. Okay. So 
again the previous person had it going off to the side the manual shows the connection like that so that's the way I'm doing it and then the thing that holds this down is this little screw this off camera but I'm going to bend this in such a way where the float the bottom of the float is parallel with the surface here and uh, you can do that if you need to if it needs to go down you can put a screwdriver just behind it and just ever so slightly on each side much so now I'll put my thumb on top here and just bend it just back up a little bit so you're just gonna have to uh, play with that until it's parallel on the on sides okay now that she's all done she's uh, level front to back level side to side way this gasket goes on and that's uh, through this second hole like that and the bowl goes on top oh sorry there's a uh, little bumps that this uh, gasket will sit on that holds it in. Make sure that those are seated well. Okay. And we're ready to go back together. Whoa! Remember this guy? This is called the float well something gasket. Anyways, uh, I forgot this. Before I put the bowl on, I should have put this down the little black tube in between the float. So I did catch it immediately after the video. So it was easy enough to take the float bowl back off and just go ahead and put this on. So don't forget that. thing to do let's get this gasket on the back we're just going to take a little bit of grease we're just going to figure out which way it goes on so it's going to go on like that take a little bit of grease and on the side that's going to face down This grease will get dissolved, you know, by the fuel, or it's not going to hurt anything that's in there, unlike the adhesive that the last person put in there. So, okay, go back. I'm just going to pop her in the track. Just get with the little grease, just. The excess just rub it on until it seats real nice and now I can go back to the manifold and put that right thanks for watching I don't know that I'll make this a regular thing it was kind of fun to just do a project and videotape it and maybe you learned something maybe you didn't I just followed the manual on everything so hopefully all the information I gave was correct so uh, I do have some other projects uh, so I'm gonna be doing a couple things to it and if you want to watch stay tuned